Before diving into the implementation details, let's go ahead and check out what we will be building in this section. Since we're just starting out with Redux, we are going to be building a very simple application that will allow us to change or update the global state. You can see it's a very simple counter application. I can go ahead and increase the counter. I can go ahead and decrement the counter and I can go ahead and add 100 to the counter and do different operations using the counter. Now, the reason that we are starting with such a simple app is that we can understand all the different components involved when you're using Redux design pattern. These components obviously involve the store, the reducer, the state, the actions, environment objects, and so much more. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we do that, I do want to tell you about my brand new website, which is awesomesharp.school. Now, this is one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. Let's go and check out some of the courses. You can see that I have courses for everything that you can imagine for iOS development, including full stack iOS development using Vapor, reactive programming using Combine, Core Data Bootcamp, Swift Data Bootcamp, MV Pattern, server-driven UI, test-driven development, even machine learning. And apart from the courses, which you can actually purchase for a very low price, you can also become a member. And this is what most of the people do. They just become a member monthly, $25, annually, $249, and they get access to 22 plus comprehensive courses, which are 130 hours. And they also get access to all the future courses. So definitely check out adamsharp.school. This is your number one resource for iOS development. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you will notice is that I am using Xcode 12. So make sure that you are using Xcode 12. If you try to run this on Xcode 11, then you may not get this code because this is using different kind of grouping feature that is only available in iOS 14, Xcode 12, all right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a store, a reducer, state and action, pretty much all of those things. And we are going to create those very, very simple things. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new group. I'll call this a store. Inside over here, I will create a new file. And I will call this file store. This will be our global store. Now I'm going to be writing all of this code inside the store file, but you can create separate file for reducer, separate file for actions and so on. Also keep in mind that we are taking things very, very slowly. So we are just trying to create something very simple, like a really simple counter, so we can get used to the flow of Redux. The first thing we need is some sort of a state, some sort of a global state. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a structure that is going to be representing the global state. Okay, so what exactly do we mean by global state? What do we want to save in the global state? Well, we're building a counter, so we want to save a counter into the global state. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a property called counter, which will be integer, and I will assign it zero because I'm just initializing it with uh, zero when we create the state. Great. Next up will be the actual store. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the store. All right, now when you're creating the store, the person who is in charge of updating the global state is the reducer. And a store without a reducer is not going to work. This means that we're creating a store which cannot update. That doesn't make any sense, right? So we have to create a reducer. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a reducer. Reducer is nothing more than a function, a function that takes in the state a function that takes in the action, which we don't have, and it then returns you the updated state. Now at this point, we don't really have action. 
So for action, I'm just going to go over here and create a protocol action. Okay. So reducer is supposed to be returning a state, but it is not doing anything. Well, what we're going to do is we're simply going to return the state. Now this is kind of like a useless reducer because whatever state that you pass into the reducer, it returns the same exact state without updating, without changing the state. Okay, we have a couple of things now. We can try to create a store. So we'll go ahead and say initializer, reducer. Well, if the reducer looks kind of like this, then we should be able to pass this function right over here. We can copy all of this as a type, but it will be a much better idea that if we create some sort of a type alias. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make these arguments, the labels, optional. So you don't really have to pass in the state and action. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a type alias. So type alias, so that we can easily refer to the reducer function. I will call it reducer. And this will be any type that takes in the state, which will be state. And this will be any type that can take in second argument as an action. You will see that this signature is very, very similar. Actually, let's go to the all the way. There we go, state. You can see that this signature that we have created is exactly like this. Now we can go back to our store and we can say that this reducer is of type reducer, which means the only thing you can pass over here as a reducer is some sort of a function which has these kind of arguments. It should take in a state and an action and it should return you a state. The second thing that we will be passing is the global state. And this will be of type state. If you don't pass a state, then we will simply initialize it for you. So we will provide some sort of a default value for the state. Now we can go ahead and create properties to hold the reducer and the state. So reducer, which is of type reducer, and state, which is of type state. Now inside the initializer, we can go ahead and add them. Reducer equals to reducer, keeping in mind that the reducer is actually a function and state equals to state. Okay, so this is the basic idea when you are creating a store, when you're creating an action and the reducer, since this is more of a function that returns something else, a state, we will go ahead and say escaping since we're assigning it on line number 29. If we go ahead and build this application, it builds successfully. This is more of a very basic architecture of Redux. But obviously, it doesn't really do anything, right? It doesn't dispatch an action. It doesn't even update the state. If you look at the reducer, it's taking in the old state, which is this, and simply returning the old state without even modifying it. So in the next lecture, we will take a step further and we will implement that how this reducer is going to change the state or update the state and how are we going to dispatch an action. In the last lecture, we set up the basic store. We also created a very basic reducer, which is not really doing anything because it takes in a state and it simply returns the same exact state back. We created a protocol for the action, but we don't really have any action created. And we have a global state where we are tracking a counter whose value is zero. In order to update the state, we have to dispatch an action. So I'm gonna go over here and create dispatch. This will take in a particular action that you want to dispatch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass in an action. Now when you're dispatching an action, it will ask the reducer that go ahead and update the state. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass in to the reducer. And you can see the reducer takes in a couple of different things. We, have, we will go ahead and pass in the state. 
and we will pass in the action that we have received. This in turn is going to give us a new state which we will assign it to our state property. Now in order for our store to notify everyone that the state has been updated and they should most probably re-render themselves, we will have to go ahead and make this an observable object. Which means that we can observe changes to this object. And whenever the state changes, we want to throw a notification. We have to tell everyone that, hey, the state has changed. You can go ahead and render or you can go ahead and do something else. But probably we will use it in a view so the view can re-render itself so it is in sync with the data, with the state that is in the global store. And in order to do that, we will simply go ahead and mark with a publish property wrapper. Okay, moving to the reducer, you can see the reducer is not really doing anything. I mean, we pass in a particular state and we don't do anything and we simply return the state. The job of the reducer is to update the state. And how would we update the state? Well, we can't really change this state that is passed to us. We have to create a separate copy of the state. So state equals to state. And what we want to do is we want to update the state. We want to update the slice of the state, just a small portion of the state, when the action that we are passing is trying to increment the state. Now, we don't really have any action right now that is designated for incrementing the state. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a structure and I will call this increment action. And this action is responsible for updating the state. Or when you receive this action, this is an indication that you should update the state by incrementing the counter. So that logic of incrementing the state is gonna go inside the reducer. Now, since we can have different kind of actions, maybe decrement action, add action, subtract action, get all movies action, we have to perform a switch on the action. And over here, we can check that if this particular action is of type increment action, and if it is increment action, then we can take the state dot counter and we will increment it by one. And we will also go ahead and implement a default. And in default, we're really not going to do anything. We're just going to break out of the Swiss statement. So now we have a reducer that is capable of updating the state. And you can see right here, we are actually updating the actual counter value, the global state, plus one. So if the value was zero, it will be plus one. In order to update the state, we have to call the dispatch. Once the dispatch has been called, then the next step would be the next destination is the reducer, which is going to update the actual state. The state is returned from the reducer. It goes over here, set the property state. Since the property state is marked with published, Whenever the state property changes, it is going to notify whoever is listening. And that is our opportunity to tell the view that, hey, you need to re-render yourself because the state has changed, the global state has changed. So let's go ahead in the next lecture, take a look at how we can map the global values, the global state to a local properties in our views. All right, so now we are done with creating the store, the reducer, the action, and everything. And we want to integrate this with our view. So let's go ahead and jump into our content view. Now inside the content view, you can see that we don't really have much code going on. So the first thing would be to connect somehow the global state and pull it down into local properties or local props. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an environment object and we still have to inject this environment object, by the way. All right, so we will have to inject this 
somewhere in the Hello Redux app, somewhere at the when the app actually starts. We have to inject that. That's not done right now. So now we have access to the store. Once we have access to the store inside the content view, we can create a structure that will represent the slice of the state that we want. Now, in every view, it will be different. This view is mostly interested in the counter and updating the counter and displaying the counter. But there might be some other view that will be interested in displaying the movies or displaying the weather or adding a customer. All right, so every view can ask for a different slice of the state. So we'll go ahead and create a structure and I will go ahead and call the structure props. These are representing the properties. And inside this props, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a counter variable, but you can call this anything you want. The whole idea is that the content view is going to use an instance of props to access the value from the global state. Now you might be saying that, okay, why are we even doing that? Can't we just simply go store dot counter dot value? I mean, counter value and you will access the counter value. Yes, you're completely fine. But sometimes you will see in the future that we will have multiple uh, stores or we, we will have multiple reducers and which are managing multiple different states or the slice of the state. So it is always a good idea to create these local properties so that we are only feeding our view with the props that it actually need and not using the store object. Now I'm gonna go over here and create a function. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a function. I will call it map. This is map state to props and map dispatch to props in JavaScript and React, but we are just gonna call it map. The map function is responsible for taking in the state. So somebody's going to pass in the state. All right. And once we have the state, we will, it will also allow us to dispatch different actions. So you can actually use this to, for dispatching and you will see that we can use it to pass a particular state to it also. So right now we are simply passing in a state that we have and it is going to eventually return props. Okay, so we will go over here and we will create an object of props. And you can see that we have to provide the counter and it is state.counter. This means that we have taken the global state and we are giving the value to the counter property, which belongs to the props structure. This is a local props. Now we have to go ahead and call the map function. So I'm gonna go ahead and say props equals to, and I'm gonna call the map function and passing in the state, which is store.state. And once we pass in that, we should be able to access these values. So I can go ahead and say props dot counter. So this is basically saying that now we are trying to access the value from right from the props. All right. Now you might be thinking again, you might be thinking, why can't we just do like that? State dot counter. And yes, you can do like this, but sometime, as I said earlier on, you may have a uh, different slice of the states. You might have uh, different reducers that you will have to go through to get to a particular value. So this can become very, very long. And you also have to think about that when you're working with a content view or a particular view, it is always a good idea to give the view only the things that it actually needs. So we are just using the props, which is the local properties. And in the local properties, it has everything that you need, which is props.counter, all right? Now, one thing that this particular props doesn't really have is the ability to dispatch an action. You can see that right now it only has a counter value, which is integer, but there is no way to update the value. So I will go ahead and create something over here. Let's say let on increment and on increment over here 
can be simply a closure which doesn't really return anything. All right. And when we are doing this map state to props over here, just map something, we can actually go ahead and pass in on increment. And on increment is a function, right? So we can go ahead and say that when you call on increment, we can go ahead and dispatch a particular action. And that action can be increment action. So basically what we have done is that in the local prop, so we have everything that the view needs. We have a counter store or a counter value. And we also have on increment, which fires the dispatch. So now if we have a button somewhere, we can utilize these changes. So if I go ahead and push this all inside some sort of a V stack, and in order to see the VStack, we have to enable the cam canvas. And here we go. We got all the list of stuff. Now we can go ahead and close this. So we will go ahead and say button. And I will say increment. There we go. And now I can say props.on increment. And that's it. So when I say props.on increment, this is going to fire store.dispatch. And in turn, this is going to dispatch an action which will go to the reducer and which will update the global state value. Now, all of this is still not going to work because we have not set the environment object. So we still have to make sure that we are injecting the environment object correctly. So let's go in the next lecture and check out how to inject the environment object and then run the program and see the result. All right, so let's go ahead and finally see that how we can inject our environment object into our application so it is available to everyone in our app. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of the store. This is the global store that we are creating, the Redux global store. And if you remember, the store can take reducer and a state. If I don't pass in the state, then it will automatically create a default state for me. So I'm just going to pass in a reducer. And we only have one single reducer anyways. So I'm just going to pass in a reducer. And that's it. Okay. Now we have created a store. We can actually use an environment object right here and pass the store as an environment object, which means that this particular store is going to be available to the content view and all of the other views that are part of the content view. Now, this will not include the views that are displayed in the modal because those are not in the same hierarchy as the content view. So we're only talking about the views that are in the hierarchy that are direct children or grandchildren and great grandchildren of content view. So anything related to the hierarchy of the content view. Okay. After that, uh, let's go ahead and actually run this and see that if we are able to increment or not. So I'm just going to go ahead and resume this. And when this is built, we should be able to see our screen and we should be able to test right there. Now, if you're testing it right over here in your uh, Xcode preview, you need to make sure that you are also passing right over here, the store, which we are not. So let's go ahead and do that. Let store equals to store. And again, we will pass in the reducer. So reducer will be the function reducer. And we can call dot environment object and pass in the store, but uh, also make sure to return from here because this is not an implicit return since we have multiple lines. And now hopefully our Xcode preview can also access the global store, okay? So now we are just waiting for this to be refreshed. And when it refreshes, we should be able to run it and we should be able to see that we can increment a global counter value. Our, all right, so it turns out the Xcode preview was not really working, so I'm just running the app on a simulator. 
and you can see it simply shows the increment button and value and if I press it updates right and this is the global state being updated so basically if anyone else if there's another view who is like hey I want to get this value from the global state they can definitely do that now we have created the incrementing how would you go ahead and create a decrementing the state now I would say try it on your own and see if you can achieve it but if you don't or if you need any help let's go to the next lecture and implement the decrementing of the state all right so hopefully you have tried to implement the decrement action but let's go ahead and do it and you will also learn about the add action which is a little bit different okay so the first thing we need to do when you're decrementing obviously we have to create a different action so right now the only action that we have is for incrementing the action so i'm just going to go call this decrement action and this action job is to obviously decrement the counter next step it is the reducer's job to update the state and this time when you are performing a decrement action you are subtracting the state so we're going to do the same thing case as decrement action and if it is a decrement action then instead of adding it to the state we will simply take one away from the state the other part will remain the same now when we go and reach the actual props you can see that props we have on increment we can actually go ahead and also have decrement so i can say on decrement and we will get nothing and we will return nothing and now when you are creating the props so let's go ahead and do it i believe you can do it over here on decrement and when we are creating the props we will simply go ahead and call store dot dispatch and we will dispatch an action which is responsible for decrementing the counter and that is decrement action and there we go so we're done with the decrement and if i go ahead and run the app right now by the way when i run the app it does allow my cpu to go crazy so you may hear cpu in the background it is just you know sophie y also this is xcode 12 earlier versions like beta edition so there might be some issues going on with that so we're running this right now and once it is running well we didn't really press we didn't really create the button to decrement so Let's go ahead and create a separate button which will be responsible for decrementing the counter. We will simply go ahead and say decrement the counter props on decrement. There we go. And now I can go ahead and play it again. And we have increment which is incrementing the value. We have decrement which is decrementing the value. Great, right? Now what about if we want to create something where you can actually pass in a value? Let's go to the store. And for this one, we are going to create another action and we will say add action, which is of type action, conforming to action. But in add action, you can just pass in a different value. Let's say that you want to increment or add five to it, then you can simply pass in five. If you want to pass 10 to it, you can pass 10. So whatever thing that you want to add, you can simply just pass in that value, okay? Now, when we reach over here, the reducer, we can actually check if this action is the add action. We will simply casting it to add action. If it is, then we can say state.counter. And what do we want to do? It's an add action, so add action.value whatever value that you're putting we are just going to add that to the counter let's go ahead and build that great now we can go back to our content view and we don't have any dispatch for adding a value so let's go ahead and create on add over here you can pass in a particular value so i'm just going to say some integer value you're going to pass in and it's not really going to return anything 
Now, whenever you're creating props, we can go ahead and say on add. And you can see that we can now pass in a particular value. We will just call it, you can call it value, you can call it anything you want. Store dot dispatch and action. And in this case, the action will be add action. And add action, you will simply pass in the value. All right. And we will create another button, which will be responsible for adding a particular value. So I can go ahead and say dot on add, and I can pass in a particular value. That can be 100 if I want to. All right. So in this one, the add on add, you, you learned that you can actually pass in a value that you can forward it to the dispatch. So let's go ahead and run this. Now I can increment, I can decrement, and if I say add, you can see I can pass in 100 value. All right, so in this section, you kind of like got started with Redux and how you can inject Redux, how you can integrate Redux with SwiftUI. In the next lecture, I will be, or in the next section, we'll be looking into how we can create multiple reducers and multiple states so that when we are, right now we're just working with a counter, right? I mean, the only, the look at our state, it's so simple. It only consists of a counter. But what about if it consists of a counter and tasks, like and movies and users and something else, then this state can become a little bit too much. And one poor reducer will be responsible for updating the whole state. So that's also not a good idea. I mean, you your case statement may end up being like hundreds of lines because one reducer is trying to update the counter and is trying to update the movies, is trying to update the task and so on, all right? So in the next section, we will look into how we can create multiple reducers and we can also create multiple slices of the state.